let's, let's start with the testimony from Bill Taylor. Well, let me give you my 30,000 foot point of view. Yeah. None of us know all the details that went on behind the scene. And unfortunately, we're not allowed to hear the testimony. I think my friends in the, in the house are making a mistake by closing off the proceedings. I, I, I just think uh, normal protocol based on President Nixon's impeachment and President Clinton's impeachment, would you, would, you would open up the hearings. You would give the president's counsel the right to hear the evidence, to challenge the evidence. So I think the American people are entitled to see the evidence and make up their own mind. Well, they would say they're going to release the transcripts. They're doing it because they don't want witnesses to infect other witnesses' testimony, and it's a deposition, not a hearing. I know what they're saying, but if I went to try a lawsuit when I had my private lawyer hat on and told the judge, I'm not going to take any live witnesses. I've taken their depositions, and I'm just going to introduce the transcript. He'd throw me out of court. If what he testified, if what we've read is true, does it cause you any concern? Well, this is where I am based on the evidence I've seen, and I want to emphasize based on the evidence I've seen. The Ukrainian government is historically and organically corrupt. The issue in this case, in my opinion, is really intent. Did the president ask for an investigation of a political rival, or did the president ask for an investigation of corruption that may have been perpetrated by a political rival. And there's a difference. When you try to indict a president, impeach a president, you charge him or her with a high crime or a high misdemeanor. That requires mens rea, intent. Ignorance of the law is no excuse, but you have to have a culpable state of mind. So you probably have a view of the emoluments clause. Do you think it's phony? I think its application has changed over time. I thought the president made a huge mistake in picking his resort for the meeting. I'm sure it's a beautiful resort, but my advice to the president was, you know, please stop leading with your chin. The people at the White House, I don't know who's in charge of that, but they should have gone to the president and said, Mr. President, uh, this is bone deep stupid.